Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Very warm welcome on behalf of Deutsche Telekom. I would like to share with you in the next 20 minutes or so a number of what we think large business opportunities where we need your help. They are all based on platforms. They are based on innovation through partners. Before I start, I would like to make a statement, which is that none of these opportunities are going to depend on the DSL tariff structure of my colleagues of Telekom Deutschland. I am fully aware that you folks got somewhat irritated, irritated by the news that went from Telekom Deutschland yesterday. Um, I'm more than willing to take questions and discuss this at the end. I think this is an important subject for all of you, but it's not the focus of the next 20 minutes. So please, bear with me. So, th this conference is about new business opportunities and venturing into unknown territory. And I hope you had inspiring talks and presentations yesterday on exactly that subject. As a matter of fact, I would have loved to be here when Harper Reed talked about disrupting the way you do political campaigning with big data. Big data was, a, I understand, a big aspect of what he presented. And that's great. Disrupting is, I think, a key word, a key subject in venturing into new business. Now, telcos are not necessarily known for disrupting in the last couple of years. Actually, they got disrupted in many areas. However, I feel that we have the right to play in a number of infrastructure platform areas, which I would like to, to share with you. Now, how do we select and make sense for us out of a map like this? And by the way, there is supposed to be a dragon there. Do you see the dragon? See the dragon, guys? There is supposed to be a dragon, right? Because this is unknown territory. There's lots of business opportunities. And how do we select them? How do we focus on a small number of you know, high impact areas as an infrastructure provider like Deutsche Telekom? Well, You've got to look at your assets and capabilities, and all of you have to do that. If you run a startup, if you run a product company, you have to understand your assets and capabilities. And we feel that as an you know, infrastructure, telecommunication company, there is traditional assets, like a trusted brand, like the ability to run large customer relationships, billing and others. But we learned in the last years new capabilities and new assets, and they are all focused on innovating through partnering. So opening up our infrastructure. For those who were here last year at Next, René Obermann made a very, I think, a very convincing pitch about, you know, we will change the way we do business with the community, uh, which is becoming more nimble in addressing products and services through partners. And I think we have delivered on that. I'll show you, you know, a number of examples. Hoopram, our incubator, incubator in Berlin, I think is a great example, but there is many others. So how do we select from this list what we focus on? So th this, this, this mix and match of capabilities, partner, run platforms, provide base infrastructure for the community on the one hand, and a trusted band on the other, you know, led us to focusing on enabling some of these new business areas. And enabling means that if you think about the Internet of Things, machine to machine, all these data that will get created has got to be stored, collected, analyzed in a secure way in the cloud. So cloud is another key term we focus on secure data centers, secure connections, and open platforms to promote innovation on top. Data analytics then is, from, from my point of view, sort of the third pillar because that's where the real value gets created. So we focus on platform businesses, mostly two-sided or multi-sided business models, partner on the B side because we have the capability to work with large companies, in particular through our subsidiary systems, and then bring it to the consumer and open up the platforms for innovation. So let's dive into some of these opportunities now. Machine to machine for us is a three digit million euro business already and we have built up in the last three years in a partner ecosystem. We have 300 partners today as part of a, the global uh, machine to machine alliance which we founded uh, which help us to provide solutions to the market. These are small companies, device manufacturers. These are you know, people working in verticals like energy, health, um, connected car, 
uh, security and others. 300 partners in this ecosystem. We focus on providing the heavy duty infrastructure for machine to machine, which is the data centers, the platform solutions, the connectivity, the hardware, but we leave it up to the market to actually innovate in front of the consumer, the business customer, uh, and the consumer in M2M. -M. Now, let's think about this opportunity. Machine to machine today is huge already. It's 140 billion euros or whatever the number is, but it's huge. It's a big, big market. Um, nine billion devices are already connected out there, and people are uh, forecasting that it's going to go up to 50 or 60 billion devices. So things connected in the, in the, in the, connected, in the uh, Internet of Things. That is a huge opportunity. VCs have invested billions in the last couple of years in startups in this area. And we're trying to promote this ecosystem through our partnering. Let's talk about some areas of machine-to-machine. Uh, -machine. Obviously, there is energy. That's a sort of a you know, key one. Uh, in 2020, 80% of meters in people's houses in Germany alone will be smart meters. They will provide information and make energy consumption transparent. And in that transparency, will foster new business models because gamification will kick in uh, at some point and people will start to compare their energy pa consumption patterns in their households, but also in their cars and then in their offices. The smart meter infrastructure is key to do that, and we have a whole a number of projects on smart meter provision in, in, in Europe running. Another area of Internet of Things is industrial automation. Now, industrial automation at this point in time uh, is simple use cases. It's actually connecting up photocopiers who then say, please maintain me, or please change my toner because it's empty, or it's vending machines who say, please refill me, I'm empty, or it's connected cows who say, my body temperature has gone up, so I'm going to give birth tomorrow to a calf, so you better send a veterinary doctor now. Or it's connected logs in trees that say, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, so somebody probably stole me during the night because I'm not in the forest where I'm supposed to be. This is fun use cases, I think. It's connecting up the things around um, all kinds of industrial applications. The, the real interesting part is going to be when Industry 4.0 kicks in. And I, I understand there was a good presentation by Pierre Steinberg yesterday on that subject. Now imagine when the smart factory, the components there, the machines, the processes, start to talk independently and provide their information to the cloud. And then somebody will innovate on that and provide self-regulating self-running processes across silos. So the, the factory today might be a silo. Tomorrow it will open up and all this information being posted to the cloud has got to be stored, collected, analyzed in a very, very secure way because this is the core processes. This is, you know, core intellectual property in factories or in car to that matter or in energy um, uh, systems that's going to be provided to the crowd and to the cloud. And we're focusing on storing this, collecting this, and managing this in a very secure way. That's what we try to stand for in our brand. This will create a ton of new business opportunities, and I need, we need your help here. Um, we ran this Idea Bird um, initiative last year, mid last year, where um, more than 600 new machine-to-machine -machine ideas were created out of the ecosystem that we have built in the last couple of years. And many of those are in implementation. So machine-to-machine, -machine, a great area of, of new business where we can find a win-win together, where startups, product companies, partners are key in the ecosystem that we're trying to push. Big data is the next one. So when you connect up all these things, they're starting to talk. They're starting to generate data, lots of data. 1% of all data generated in all systems today is analyzed in the internet, about 1%. This will go up. This percentage will increase substantially. VCs have poured $5 billion in the last four or five years into this area of um, uh, innovation. So there's huge opportunity out there. And let's talk about a couple of examples here. 
Um, Harper Reed's presentation last night, I think, was about big data. It was about assembling a winning coalition in a political campaign, in this case Obama's re-election campaign, vote by vote. So use multi-channel information, including crowdsourced, to make sure that somebody who might be on the verge of deciding to vote for X or Y actually gets the right information at the right point in time to push him or her over the bridge. That's pretty bold. That's big data. And that's really, that, I think that's a great opportunity. Now, there is, these companies produce data now and they have to make sense out of them. They have to create value from this data. There is not a lot of people around who understand how to manipulate, how to, how to use the algorithms to come up with new innovative business ideas. So it's a great opportunity for, for a startup um, community uh, to, to provide impact. Let's take another example of sort of a closed system around big data, which is health. So you might have seen the announcement of an insurance company, Aetna, a couple of weeks ago, that they're actually going to use big data to prevent cancer, um, diabetes, and other diseases. Now, that's a bold statement. How do they do that? Well, they, they would pilot predictive analysis using data, patient data and other source data of the health ecosystem to predict the evolution of a disease along the way. That's pretty intrusive stuff and you might immediately ask where is data privacy and data security? I think that's a concern that we all share and have to think about very, very carefully. But if that works, the health sector is going to save billions and billions of euros. So that's another area, another application, a very obvious one, health, where big data is going to play a big, big role. Now there is open systems in big data evolving, like, and I would love to give you this example because it's also a call for action, like the Singapore Smart City hackathon that happened mid last year, where folks down in Singapore sort of bought up or got um, you know, provided smart city data from about everything from transport, telecoms, logistics, police, uh, health system, weather, whatever happens in smart city. And then those folks ran a three-day hackathon on with 200 people to come up with use cases in the smart city. And a whole range of those are actually in implementation or production now. I just want to give you one which I find really interesting. You know, and it's obviously the obvious ones and the simple ones that make a big difference, like always. Well, if you have the right data around traffic, weather, um, conditions, and a couple other factors um, to organize how your ambulances go, keeping their KPI of being at the right place to save a life in five minutes, and you have all these conditions around you, you are able to adapt dynamically, at least in steps a couple of times per day, the provision of the right resources and ambulances. Well, imagine that you're going to save another 100 lives you know, per year doing, the right, doing this in the right way with the right algorithms, then that's already huge impact. So anyway, I think I would like to, you know, to sort of um, put out a call for action here for all of us you know, to think about smart cities, to think about the data that's being generated, and to put our brains around it and come up with useful cases around big data on smart cities, in connected homes, in connected cars, and about connected everything, really. Cloud. Now, cloud, I mentioned it, that's where we're going to store all this stuff. And it's got to be stored in a very, very secure way. The cloud. Um, and I'm, I'm going to focus today on a very specific area of cloud because I don't have the time to go into sort of the whole uh, um, area. The one neglected uh, business area of cloud is small and medium businesses because these companies, let's, Germany, let's take Germany as an example, they don't really use cloud. The market is nation. It doesn't really exist. The employees of these companies, you folks, many of you, use cloud apps and cloud processes, but in many cases, not, not really in a, in a way that's in any case coordinated or that's in any case you know, following some kind of strategy. So it's just happening somehow. And I think that's fine for the moment, but about 
70% of SMBs say they would love to, to actually have a cloud strategy and use you know, cl cloud apps, cloud processes, but they, are, they don't do it today. Today, the number who actually runs cloud apps, about 9% of companies in Germany, because they are, they are worried about security and they are worried about manageability. So wh what we have decided to do about a year ago is to provide a cloud platform for SMBs which again is purely partner-driven and partner-based. We have now a number of uh, Lighthouse uh, partners lined up, including companies like Box.net, obviously Microsoft 365, uh, you know, a number of smaller apps around project management, CRM, security, many, many others. We have 40 partners now, we're gonna have 100 partners you know, by the end of the year, and then more and more. This is supposed to become a platform, a industry platform around cloud, starting with Germany, but then extending it to Europe. Um, and we recently got rated by Experton, uh, a cloud analyst, as the number one uh, visionary and provider here, because this is purely focused on, we focus on our assets and capabilities, infrastructure, open systems, running this ecosystem, and making sure that these cloud apps and processes are provided in a secure way and you know, with the usual um, advantages around single sign-on, manageability, data being you know, sort of managed in the background and all that. But then we leave it up to you, we leave it up to the market to actually innovate on that ecosystem. Let's move to smart home, another great opportunity here. Um, we have been talking about smart home for a long, long time, and not a lot has happened, to, to, be, to be honest. You know, about 10, 15 years, this is another mega trend that's being discussed, but it's finally starting to happen in a number of areas. The, the, the market today is about a billion euro big in Germany. Let's take Germany as, a, as an anchor here. But it's mostly hardware. So it's sort of all of us buying thermostats or smart plugs or you know, another box where we put in the household and try to come up with some, you know, with rudimentary cases around, you know, um, if the windows opens, the heating stops. There is innovative new plays out there, like uh, a company called Todo. Many of you might know this company, which is some, doing something similar than Nest, the intelligent thermostat that's uh, being sold in the U.S. now quite successfully uh, in Germany. So there's. You know, there's creative, there's creativity starting to happening in this smart home area. The issue is, are people willing to pay for it? How do we get this ecosystem off the ground? Because it's a consumer ecosystem, and the 80% use case that people are willing to consider paying for is energy savings in the household. That, now, that's not going to be enough to drive an ecosystem and innovation around all kinds of things that will start to connect around the household. So what we have decided and what I would like to offer to you um, is a platform called KiwiCon, which we're gonna launch in September, IFA now, big time with about 30 partners, including big appliance companies, but also startups, uh, you know, companies around security, around comfort, around lifestyle, around energy, and this is an open platform. The SDK is already available to, to all of you, to all of us, so we can innovate on this already. It's an open ecosystem play where the actual innovation will happen through, the, through partners um, in the area of consumers, but also SMBs uh, uh, increasingly. Connected car is big. It's big, big opportunity. There are people who are saying that by 2020, there is gonna be something like 600 billion uh, generated out of connected cars, which is that 90% of cars will actually have a full connectivity suite built into the car, most likely based on VLAN and a couple of others like LTE, 3G connectivity, but also a platform, a software platform that will provide all kinds of services in the car. And this is another call for action that I'd like to throw out here because this is gonna be big, folks, really big. Um, once there is somewhat a standard here, which we are working on, you will see all kinds of use cases evolving in cars because we all spend lots of time in cars, obviously. Let's think about some of the fun use cases here. Now, today, 
companies like Glimpse, to take this example, already offer a car service that allows to share your location where you are with your friends, with your buddies while you're driving, and then you know, uh, ensure that you meet at a certain point, certain time, and share information that is relevant for, you know, while you're driving. But think about this. Think about the creativity that this is going to unleash, in particularly in the area of services, and there's obvious ones, like your car at some point will figure out which parking spot is available, and this parking spot will be crowdsourced through a service into the connected car. So it's not only information that parking providers will issue, but also information that's going to be somewhat crowdsourced. And I'm sure you're all aware of Waze, a new initiative Israeli company to source uh, maps dynamically from the crowd, this, uh, and many others, there's you know, many others in this space like Navigon and TomTom, Tom, many others. You, know, you will see these services getting integrated into connected cars more and more. But then think about your kids watching um, you know, video in the back, and they actually see how dad or mom is driving in the front. And they're going to get this information compared to all kinds of people that are driving around you, and they're going to share this with their friends, and they're going to say, my dad is driving 6% better than the average in the street. And then we're going to do deals with driver-based insurance, which we're currently doing in the US, not in Europe. Uh, which is going to say, you accelerate and brake too much, and the distance to the car in front of you is, is not you know, large enough, so your insurance is going to go up 20% next month, unless you change your driving behavior and all that. So just think about the creativity of what's this going to unleash. This is great. And again, again and again, data privacy, data security is going to be a huge subject while we enter this big data, machine-to-machine -machine space, where all things are going to talk and are going to provide information. And again, I feel we're well positioned as Deutsche Telekom to focus on that. Make it secure. Provide the platforms, but provide open platforms everywhere, always, relentlessly, open platforms. Innovation is not happening in any walled gardens. It's happening in the open ecosystem. So in the interest of time, uh, I'm just going uh, anyway, to, I have to talk 30 seconds about mobile payment because it's so fascinating. Uh, so, so mobile payment is another trend, has been talked about for a long time. It is happening now, folks. It's starting. People are actually you know, rolling out mobile wallets now. We have launched one in Poland, which has you know, about 10,000 active customers already, and it's going up. We'll have, you know, go up to 50,000 active users in our Polish company at the end of the year. We're going to launch our mobile wallet uh, later this year in Germany. Our um, competitive folks, uh, colleagues from the other telcos are doing that. You will see traction from Apple, Google, and all the others. There's lots of wallets already around. But the fun part in this area is commerce, mobile commerce. Nobody of us you know, has, is going to get a kick out of you know, just paying my 1 euro 20 coffee at Starbucks now from the smartphone, and then I see the receipt or something. I mean, that's not going to change the world. What will really drive this is when commerce kicks in. So the context of what I'm doing is, is taken into account. So maybe this is starting at the point where I'm going to get you know, the, obviously the fame of voucher, loyalty, offers, context-based information, but at the point where I'm seriously, seriously starting to get rid of this, you know, which is not necessary, all the cards in there, all the cash in there, all the receipts I'm getting and all that stuff should and will just move into the smartphone. And at that point, it will be pervasive. And we are fostering this ecosystem, um, you know, working with people like uh, iZettle, for example, um, a European company, that provides payments for uh, merchants or for sort of the lower end, as an example. And we're working with lots of other partners. Again, we are just open, you know, concentrating on the ecosystem, on the technology, on running this stuff secure, on providing the payment mechanisms. That's it. The consumer experience, you guys invent. So I'm coming to the end. I think we have learned, telcos, or, you know, I think Deutsche Telco, we have learned to acquire new assets. And these assets are, listen. Listen to your customers, listen to your partners. Make it easy to partner and run platforms, two-sided, multi-sided platforms. And I gave you a couple of examples where we think we can successfully do that. So I, 
Rene Obermann stood here a year ago and he said, folks, we're opening up, telcos are opening up. I don't know if you believed that back then. Um, you gotta have to believe it more and more because we have hundreds and hundreds of partners live in our ecosystem. And, and that's the future. Infrastructure, that's what we focus on and you focus on innovation. Thanks very much. Thank you. We do have some time for questions, and I have a few, but please, um, people in the room, there's two microphones there, or raise your hand, somebody will run to you with a microphone, if you have questions for Thomas Kiesling. And I'm looking around. Okay, well, let me start with this idea of partnership. Um, partners can be many different things. So, is it, uh, you know, d d take one of the services you describe. You know, everything is connected, everything is analyzed. Take the connected cow. Where does Deutsche Telekom see its role and where is the partner? And is it then a sort of a venture together or a license or a shared revenue model? Mm -hmm. what, what are the connections you make with partners? Let's, let's, take, let's take a smart home example because this is, I think, very easy to understand. So we provide an SDK to the partner community and you guys can develop, let's say, an energy use case or a security or whatever use case you want to do around it. Now you're going to get access to all the other folks from other areas. So there might be people who, already, who are connecting the scale that I, you know, I'm studying stepping on to see if my bio data has improved from the last couple of days because I'm subject to a diet, whatever. This thing is connected through M2M uh, you know, with, with the rest of the platform and provides use cases to all of you. So it's cross, we're, we're promoting cross use case availability. Today, all the platforms in the market, they're vertical. So if you as a developer mm -hmm. decide decide to you know, provide great use cases for an energy company on just energy, then you're going to develop this just for, against one platform. And there is 25, 30, 35 platforms in the market. We all know that Android and iOS has become successful because it created an ecosystem, an open ecosystem of developers. And that's exactly what we're doing in many areas. And is this something, I mean, it's open ecosystem. And you said you were launching in September, you know. Is this something for Germany or is this an international ecosystem? Are you actually opening it up to the world? Depends on the area, right? Smart home, you know, Germany has certain characteristics which make this market um, valuable, attractive. This is where it's happening. This is happening in a couple of other countries, but I think Germany is really well at, at sort of advanced for a number of reasons, and that market is happening now. It's happening in the UK to some extent, Netherlands, you know, but Germany is key. In the case of mobile payment, this is a European play, and it's going to be a global play to some extent, because the investment that you need to plow into this to make a, you know, to turn this into a standard, so we all going to you know, be able to pay or to do mobile commerce, independent of which operator you know, you, you have your contract with. That, to build that ecosystem is a, is a European and a global play, and you know, guess who, are, who, the, who the folks are we're competing against? It's Google and Apple, and those are global plays. So it depends so, on so the market. Some of them are regional, yeah. some of them are global. The, this payment system that you're looking into, and, and many different people are looking into payment systems at the moment, because it's a very interesting field. If you develop it, would it actually be available for all operators, as you suggested just now? Or is this a Deutsche Telekom pay system? This has got to be available for all operators. And that's the way we run a, an initiative called ISIS. You might, some of you, you know, who are from the payment area might have heard about it. Where in the US, T-Mobile US went together with all the other operators, and by the way, also a bunch of large banks, the five largest banks in the US, as a matter of fact, to create a standardized ecosystem. And that, that kind of bold play, that's what we need to do, and that's what we're pushing in Europe as well. Because this is an interesting topic for the whole event. We, we talked about the dragons yesterday as well, where we, we looked at various small companies doing really interesting things, disrupting markets. But there's also the giant companies that you need if you're going to build really, really big capital intensive new services sometimes. This is what you're doing also in the data field. You mentioned only 1% of data is now being analyzed. Does Deutsche Telekom see itself as a company that will be also analyzing the data, or is it just servicing, hosting, and cloud computing the data? I, I think, very good question. I think where we stop is at the enrichment layer. So we're going to collect, 
analyze, you know, you know that you know, through big data, we can now analyze way more data types than we could do in the past. So we would run large Hadoop clusters and then provide rinsed or sort of enriched data to the community, to, to, to uh, enterprises, as well as to the, to the consumer market. But that's where we stop. You know, we don't have, and we, we would not even try to have vertical know-how, industry by industry, in actual getting into the core processes, the core business processes. I'm looking at the audience because I bet there are some questions. Don't be shy. Move one bite. Then you will all be tweeting that you have comments about Deutsche Telekom, but not asking them now. I mean, I think this, the field of um, data becoming so important. What we see as well is that there's a lot of small new companies, but suddenly, again, the universities where the very smart minds are grouping together have, a, have a, an advantage in the data analysis field. Are you working together with that kind of partner as well? I, you, you describe yeah, smaller I mean, companies, big yes, partners. Yes, no, I think, I think it's the whole range of cooperation we're, we're running. You know, take innovation, Deutsche Telekom T-Labs, Innovation Labs here in Berlin, uh, with a couple of hundred people, heavily entwined into the academia field, working very closely with universities, with institutes, and trying to push standards, open standards as well. So absolutely we're doing this. We're, no, we're trying to, to run the whole gamut of partnering you know, through startups, product companies, and we need to partner with large companies. But we, you know, our vision is provide the infrastructure for everybody to innovate on. Thank you very much. Thank you.